Democracy is defined as a system of government by the whole population or all the eligible members of a state, typically through elected representatives. A wise man broke this down even further, he called it the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. While this is a very profound definition, what is most important in my view is the last part of that definition, a government for the people. To my mind, a government for the people means a government that has its people at heart. As a matter of fact, it's generally believed that government has three main functions. First, the protection of lives and properties of its citizenry. Second, an enabling environment for wealth, acquisition, and distribution. And third, the pursuit of happiness, whatever that means to every individual, within the ambits of their fundamental human rights, of course. That said, can we come say that we're in a democracy in Nigeria? Let's start with security, the protection of lives and property. Just last week, another container accident in Ojo Legba, Lagos, Nigeria, killing nine passengers, nine souls lost. I say another because this is not the first incident in this same location. What about the countless cases of kidnappings and whole communities being ravaged in the Northeast? The average Nigerian does not feel safe anymore. And the question remains, how many more lives need to be lost for enough to be enough? What about the economy? Creating an environment for wealth acquisition and distribution. Where do we even begin to dissect this issue? Is it just inflation or the recent currency change that has plunged many individuals and businesses into frustration? It's not enough to have money in the bank now. Now you must queue for hours at the cash machine or join a multitude of more frustrated customers inside the banking halls to get that money out. Should we talk about fuel? Almost three months of scarcity with price hikes and queues all over Nigeria. Let's go back to democracy again for a second. The government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Again, the top five global economies by GDP, the United States, China, Japan, Germany, and the United Kingdom, of all these you know, countries, only one or two of them are actual democracies, meaning they are not necessarily you know, elected leaders. But the leaders and the governments they have, they think about the people and they put the people at heart. I hereby advocate that Nigeria finds and defines a democracy that works for the people. That is a government that works for the people. We have a government. It was elected, the government was elected by us, the people. But they don't send us the people. That's it. So which, which now goes to so, the so did definition it, of a let, let, let me put the economy in there. Okay. Uh -huh. I love your line of thought. The government was elected by the people, mm -hmm. right? But well, I'm not for the people. Mm -hmm. But the, the truth is, the government that I elected actually did business with the people and have com completed their business on the election day because some people got paid to give them the votes, mm -hmm. right? And now they have to pay back those money at their own interest rates at their own preferred time. So it is about them. And that is where the issue of Kaba has come in. I think far beyond the democracy, as a people, what are their ideology? The party we are talking about, can we say categorically, the PDP, is it APC? Is it any of those parties registered in Nigeria? What ideology do they present? outside their individual interests. That is where the problem is. With the airlines, are we still complaining at the back door? How many of us are actually engaged at the local level, polling units, ward level, to educate those vulnerable people who do not know the difference between A and B, but only answers to money, because it's, it's difficult for them to even have three square meals in a day. And when they have someone who give them the opportunity to have five square men with just few money, they key in. So these are things we should be asking ourselves before we start condemning government. I think we should condemn ourselves for not doing enough to get things right as it used to be, it is expected to be rather. Thank now you. Let me just quickly ask you one question. Whose work is it to educate the people? Is it my job or the government's job? That's just the only question that I have. Whose job is it to the, educate the, community, the grassroots? The community leaders. 
We don't need, what is government? Government has different levels, but the community, it has to start from the community leaders. No, government, government is going bottom. Um, so, Hussein, I mean, I understand what you're saying. So, I understand that, you know, governance, as a matter of fact, is elections that are grassroots, that require grassroots strategy. Government itself is never bottom up. It's always top bottom. So, for instance, a community that wants to do something that feels like it's great, if it's not constitutionally, you know, acceptable, it's on its own. If it doesn't have the wherewithal, if it doesn't have the funds, the people, the you know required elements and you know um, machinery to do what he wants to do, he, he, do he can't do it. So government is always top bottom; it's never bottom up. However, so yeah. so it's important that we understand. So it's not a question of blaming government. Let, let, let me tell you exactly what the problem is. It's, it's a systemic problem. See, I, I did some work with you know with some people that gave me some exposure to how government works over the past couple of years. I assure you. There's actually structures and systems in place that were designed for the people to benefit. The problem is the people that are managed these structures. For instance, that community, community that you're talking about, many of them are selfish. I mean, and it's not all, it's not only, so you talk about, oh, people were elected and they got in because somebody gave them money. Some people were not elected. Some people were appointed. They didn't spend any money. Commissioners are not elected. They are appointed. Ministers are not elected. They are appointed. So at what point do we now take responsibility for what you've been given, the responsibility, I mean, the, the position that you hold? The problem is service. We don't realize that leadership is service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And service from the word servant. Mm -hmm. You are here to serve. The problem is we have put this thing upside down. So the person that's supposed to serve is being served. So it's an upside down thinking to say that, oh, it's not... The government in itself is systemic, system, systematically um, dysfunctional. And that's where you start from. Once a system is problematic, you put the people... Uh, we've had some of the best minds to be, you know, commissioners and ministers mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Why mm -hmm. didn't yes. they work? If you want to look at the government, I would, it's, it's even not the elected government. The most corrupt sector, as we speak today, is the civil service and a little of the public service. Because it's the civil service that will actually educate, enlighten the public servants how they can steal. They're the one not making things work. And they are not elected. They are actually paid staff who go, who go steady. I, I, I know you will understand what I'm saying. And for us to way forward is to at least try to educate ourselves from bottom up, which is not expected to be, but this is how we have to get out of this mess. Okay, I think for me, hmm, my thoughts on this would be that I truly would just say that indeed for Nigeria at this point in time, it is indeed an SOS, urgently needed a government for the people, because without any gainsaying or any doubt about it, Governance in Nigeria needs to be relooked at, restructured, or redefined. Because somehow, we cannot have the kind of situation and the crisis that we have going on now. And we say that, oh yes. So I would like to agree with you that what is democracy as we are practicing it? What exactly is it that we need? Nigeria may need to actually define and understand what their own level of democracy is going to be mm -hmm. and how it's going to work best for them. Because mm -hmm. something somewhere in the system seems to be broken. And maybe that's why I could say, look, at this point in time, while we're still defining it, please let's find strength, let's get financial literacy, and Absolutely. let's maybe try to find access to the redesigned Naira <laughs> that is somewhere roaming in the streets of Nigeria. Anyway. Hidden. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. hidden. <laughs> but please, have, I would like to find it. So both the old laws and the new laws are hidden. Yeah, I think some things are hidden somewhere, and then your ATM cards they, are also are hidden. <laughs> your ATM cards are also hidden, and your transfers are hanging. So somewhere, please, let's be strengthened because Nigeria may not happen to us. Amen. Anyway, the end always seems to come too soon on The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, the hash, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, 
Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye.